Hey everyone, it's Strange Michael. I hope you're doing well today. I have an art housey type of movie to review for you. This is kind of a horror thriller type of movie and kind of not at the same time. It has dramatic elements and has a lot going for it, but mainly it's an experimental art house type movie. It came out in 2018 starring Nicolas Cage and that movie is Mandy. You probably heard a lot about this years ago when it came out. I can't believe it's already been five years. I think this is a Shudder original. It's still on Shudder. That's where I randomly watched it about two weeks ago. And let me tell you, Mandy really stuck with me. This is a beautiful, beautiful, sad, depressing, amazing movie that gave me chills. It made me sad. It made me want to cry sometimes. I was so emotionally engaged in such a strange movie that I loved it. My name on YouTube, as a matter of fact, is uh, Strange Michael. So, of course, this is my kind of movie. It A lot of the times, it feels like a more stylistic blend of Nicholas Winding Refn and David Lynch, two of my favorites, blended together into one type of movie. This director hasn't made much. I think he wrote this as well. And I'm dumbfounded that Nicolas Cage, of all people, ended up in this because he's amazing. Richard Brake, or Breaker, I think it's Richard Breaker, who's also in a lot of Rob Zombie projects. He was the guy that was cussing so much over the cow in Halloween 2's remake. Uh, <laughs> he's in this. He has a small role in here, too. It was good to see him again. I loved Mandy. I think it's perfect. I absolutely love this film. And if I, anything I'd recommend to you that I reviewed recently, it would be this. Uh, the next film I'm about to review here soon is Taurus Trap. That's a really great one, too. But again, Mandy is style over substance. It's more of a, a how to execute this type of story more than the kind of story it's telling. You've seen this kind of story before, uh, but in a very different way this time around. If you haven't seen this movie, you're missing out. I stand by that. Anyway, Mandy is uh, essentially the wife of Nicolas Cage. He has kind of a job. They live in kind of like a treehouse home. I know that sounds strange, but it really fits for this movie. Sounds like a really bad choice, but it works really well for this kind of story and the way it's done. The kind of world they live in is not really entirely like ours. It's a little bit different. It feels a little bit more like a fantasy movie in a lot of ways. Um, but anyway, they live in kind of a treehouse type of thing. He does like a logging job for, a li for kind of a living, you know? <clears throat> and she's an artist. She stays at home, does different things with that. And... Uh, one day while he's gone, she happens to be walking down the side of the road, and there's a local cult that's nearby who happens to be driving by one day. There's about five or six people in this cult. They're led by this one particular guy, and they try to be like pretend Christians. He tries to be like a pretend uh, Christian leader of some sort, kind of like a Jim Jones type, but not like a I'm going to make you all kill yourself type of Jim Jones type. Basically, he's just a sleazy guy using religion to sleep with women. And that happens a lot, so that, that's realistic enough that it, it horrifies me as a Christian. Um, but it, he and his gang are outright just evil. I mean just plumb out evil. They have like a horn they use sometimes where they communicate with like these biker demon type things. Um, there may or may not be a supernatural element to this movie. I don't want to tell you too much about that. I don't want to imply that on you because I want you to watch it yourself and really come to your own conclusions about that. Not that you can't. But that, you know, we can debate different things like that. It's one of those kinds of great movies that it doesn't really matter which way it goes. It's still super effective the way it's done. Anyway, they're a very weird cult. Um, very demonic, evil cult. And the cult leader happens to spot Mandy walking up the side of the road one day when they're driving down in their van. And uh, he immediately starts saying things like, I want her. I want her to be brought in. I want to go find her. And he sends his people out. They go and kidnap Mandy. And Nicolas Cage comes home one day. Uh, to find out that she's been taken. And he goes nuts. And he goes basically on a hunt for her. He builds like this amazing battle axe type of thing, which again adds to that fantasy element this movie is going for. I want to tell you up front, as a kind of revenge movie, and the motivations happening in this movie, you will never forget it. I don't think it's for everybody. Not everybody's going to love the style this movie's going for, or how dark it gets. It's a very dark movie. Uh, has a little bit of monologue stuff in here, which people might not like that either. But I personally think with the writing, the cinematography, the neon look to it, not with like actual 1980s neon background lighting and stuff, but the, the pinks, the blues, the purples that are used for the backgrounds, for the lighting of this movie, it's gorgeous. It's one of the most beautiful films I think I've ever seen in my life. And it's mostly indoors. And it's almost always at nighttime, which is strange to say it's one of the most beautiful films you've ever seen, and you'd put it up there with, like, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. But in a very different way, you know? That's just me personally, though. 
It is a beautiful film. I think it's absolutely beautiful. And everything down to the music especially, this throwback synthwave music that they have in it for the atmosphere building, it doesn't just help with the tension, it doesn't just help with the script, it helps with the acting, it helps with everything in it. It, it really builds the soul of this movie up and really makes it more effective than I think it could have ever been for me personally. It's one of those films like Drive, with uh, you know Nicholas Winding Refn, Drive, Ryan Gosling. It's one of those things like that. If that soundtrack had not been there the way it was, Drive would be less effective than it actually is. And that's how I feel about Mandy as well. That soundtrack, along with everything else visually, the heart and soul behind the script, the acting. Nicolas Cage gave one of the best performances, if not the very best I've ever seen in my life, in this movie from him and I love it I love it so much everything about it I think is perfect the villains are very very evil like I said very villainous there's some stuff in here you've never seen there is a lot of gore not anything too like different that you haven't seen somewhere but the brutality of it the violence of it is really effective too you better be prepared for that man because it's a it's a strange brutal movie but you won't forget Mandy if you haven't seen this film after five or six years of it being out, uh, this is incredible. This is absolutely incredible. I'm so sad that I missed it after all this time and all the praise I've been hearing about it for ages now. It makes me sad because of how much I loved it and how sad it actually made me. I was rooting for Nicolas Cage throughout this entire film. I really was, and I stuck with this movie, and I loved it. I watched it in one sitting. That doesn't happen very often where I don't get up to go anywhere. Not to go get snacks, not to go to the restroom, nothing. I sat on my couch and watched this entire thing from beginning to end one night with my wife in the room, and I loved every moment of it. I think it is one of the most engaging, beautiful movies ever made, and I will hold on to that till the day I die. Anyway, with all that being said, if I had to rate, uh, <laughs> if I had to rate Mandy... The 2018 masterpiece of this director, masterpiece of Nicholas, uh, Nicholas Winning Ref, and I keep saying that, masterpiece of Nicholas Cage, or everybody involved for that matter. By the way, all of the acting was excellent from everybody. If I had to rate this film on a five-star basis, you probably know what it's going to be. It's a five out of five stars for me. I loved this movie so much. I hope you know that, and I hope you don't forget about it. And I hope, I personally hope, if you have a membership to Shudder, or if you've seen the DVD of Mandy somewhere, like at Walmart or something like I used to see, I hope you'll pick it up and put it in your collection or check it out or something because, man, it is a great movie. They don't make movies like this anymore. They really don't. They make shit like Skin of a Rink and then say it's a great movie. Anyway, have you seen Mandy? What did you think about it? Put your thoughts and comments down in the comment section down below. I would love to hear what more fans of Mandy or even people who are opposed to the movie have to say down in the comment section down below because this is the kind of film that I like to debate and talk about. This is a great flick. Man, I recommend this so much. Anyway, thank you for watching, guys. God bless you all. Tomorrow's Friday. Can't wait for it. I'm so ready for the weekend. It's going to be a great weekend. Anyway, thank you all. God bless you again. Goodbye.